the recent release of Llama 3.1 offers a model with an incredible level of performance, closing the gap between the closed source language model and open source large language model. Llama 3.1, you can fine tune it and you can use it for your specific use case to achieve better performance and customizability at a very lower cost. I will show you how you can fine tune Llama 3.1 in this video. Before starting, let me give a short introduction. About Welcome us. to AD Academy. The main motto of this channel is AI for Am Janta. My name is Dr. Ayan Devnath. I am an IIT Delhi alumni and Fulbright Research Scholar at Harvard University. I have total 9 plus years of experience in the field of Artificial Intelligence, Deep Learning, Machine Learning, NLP, Generative AI. Let's watch this video. Welcome to my Metaverse. To efficiently fine-tune Llama 3.1 8 billion model, we will use Unslot library which has been developed by Daniel and Michael Han. So thanks to both of them. If you use Unslot library, it provides 2x faster training execution and 60% memory efficiency. Unfortunately, Unslot supports only single GPU use. Anyway, I am going to show you how you can use Unslot library to fine tune Llama 3.1 model in just four simple steps. The first step we have to install and import few libraries. We will be loading the model. In the third step, we will prepare our data and tokenizer. And in the fourth step, we will do the training. So coming to each and every step, and I will explain each and everything. So in the first step, we will be installing and import libraries. So first of all, this is used, this command is used to install the unstart library from the GitHub. And here I am using triple Q, which is a parameter just you can use it for most white mode. It means that it will not show you much details of the dependencies which it is installing. Rather, it will show you the basic points and then the errors. Okay. And then here we are also installing few more things like PIFT. PIFT is parameter efficient fine tuning. We are using QLORA technique with PIFT to do this fine tuning and then we are also using accelerated and bits and bytes so bits and bytes are generally used so that the uh, model which you are using that weights you can control and it is having like uh, 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 like 16 bit floating points it will help you to have a precise weights and then it, you will just import few of those libraries which you are using and first language model is a is imported from unslot and this is highly used i will show you how you are doing this now we will be loading in the second stage now we will be loading the model for the pift so maximum sequence length here we are keeping it as 2048 so generally we keep it less but here i am keeping it is a longer so that this is the longest context window this is the space of the context window which you can use now you will be using the model and the tokenizers so for a specific model a specific tokenizer is used always remember these things so first of all i am using uh, the model which is meta lama 3.1 so i have to mention these things and from where we are using from the unstart okay so for that what we need you need fast language model which is a class from the unstart package and then I am using this model name and the maximum sequence length and I will be using this 4 bytes so the boolean is true for it and then the D type is none. Okay, fine. And now we will be using this model and few of the parameters. So one of the parameters is rank. So this rank determines the LoRa matrix size. Rank typically starts at 8 but it can go up to 256. Here I am keeping it as 16 which is an optimal thing to take. Then LoRa alpha. Uh, here also I am taking it as 16. So alpha is a scaling factor for the updates. Alpha directly impacts the adapter's contribution and uh, it often set to 1x or 2x depends. Here I am taking it as 16. Okay. Now a dropout I am not using so I am keeping it as 0. So target models. What is this? So LoRa can be applied to various model components including attention parameters like q k v which are the matrices of a transformer okay so we will be changing those things output projection and fit forward blocks so details of these param parameters you can uh, get i will be creating another separate video where i will tell you the details of these things if you change these variables so what will happen i will have a separate video for this but here now you can understand that few 
parameters which I will be giving this is mainly for PEF techniques. Okay, so these parameters are used for the PEF techniques that is parameter efficient fine tuning. Okay, so once you do this, it will start to load the model and it might take some time. So for me, it took some time. Okay, now coming to how you can prepare the data and how you can use that tokenizer. I have mentioned that for a particular model, a particular tokenizer is used. So here you have to explain which tokenizer you are using. Okay, so what we are doing here? So we have to load and prepare our data set. So instruction data sets are stored in particular format. So it can be Alpaca, Share, GPT or OpenAI. So first we want to parse this format to retrieve our instruction and the answers. So here we are using FineTome 100 uh, K data sets which uses actually shared chat GPT format with a unique conversation techniques. So for that purpose, I am using this gate chat GPT template. And then here I am mentioning that chat template. Okay. And here we parse our shared chat GPT data set with our mapping parameters. Oh. This mapping parameter and it includes this chat ML. So it means this it will map this template with each and every rows of the data set. So each and every data is within the data set. We then load and process the entire data set to apply the chat template to each and every conversation. Since we are taking this conversation samples. Okay, and now comes the important steps, which is the training. And while doing the training, you have to explain or give the parameters like which tokenizers you are using. So I have already defined the tokenizer, that is what I am passing. Then what is your training data set? So this data set I am creating. So this is my training data set. So I am passing this data set into my training data set. And then like what maximum length sequence, so which I have already explained 2048 in the beginning, that's what I am giving. And then few training arguments I am giving. So these arguments are very important to know. First of all, I'm using this learning rate, which controls like how strongly the model updates its parameter. If it is too low, then this is also not good. If it is too high, then that is also not good. So you have to give a uh, value so that the training can happen smoothly. It will not get stuck in local minima. Okay. Now there is one more is learning rate scheduler. It adjusts the learning rate during the training process. It starts with the high learning rate and then it is slowly gets decreased in the later stages. Okay, now this is like for part device. So for each of the GPU device, how many process you want, like in how many process you want to separate it. So here I am using it as four. Here just to showing purpose, I am using number of epoch as one. Okay, you can obviously keep it more. So here just to show you, I am taking it as one. It will take some time to do the training. Okay, and then here I am also using the weight decay. It is a regulation technique that adds a penalty uh, for the weights to your loss functions. Okay, and this is the output directory. So where I will keep my output, so I am giving the part to it. So once I am having this SFT trainer, so this is this is that class. So I am passing it as an object trainer, and then I am doing trainer dot train. Okay, so it will start doing the uh, training. So it will take some time. So here, as you are seeing. So it is already running. So I have started it, it is still running. Okay, so it will take some time and it will show you the uh, steps for your training. And, loss. Okay, so for training these things, I am using 8000 GPU uh, on Google Colab. The training takes around four hours, 45 minutes. So it is a, a good amount of time. Of course, you can use a smaller GPU with less VRAM and a smaller batch size, which will reduce the training time so now coming to the inference part so after training what you are left with you have to do the inference so for that what you will be doing so let's start uh, it with a very sample prompt so this is not a rigorous evolution but just a quick check to detect the potential issues so we use this fast language uh, model and then for inference uh, to do this inference so this is how you can do the inference and if you want to save your model then you can use these things so just model dot self written model and then you can save it and if you want to push it then you can use this command to push it to the uh, like hugging face hub okay so just in four steps i have shown you how you can use it uh, how you can use meta 
Llama 3.1 and you can do fine tuning. So I'm just iterating you. You have to install and import few libraries. And once you did, you have to load the model. So you have to give like which models you are using. And then once this model is loaded, you have to give few parameters for the paste where rank is very important, alpha is very important. Okay, and then target module you can give or you may not give. Okay. And once this is done, you have to prepare your data and a tokenizer. So here I am using like share chat GPT conversations uh, to use it as my data. And then I'm using this mapping uh, techniques to map my uh, template to each and every data sets. And then I will be doing the training. Well, while doing the training, you have to explain, give few parameters which is used for the training, which I have already explained it. And then you are doing an inference. Okay, so I hope you like this video and you can share this video with all of your friends and colleagues who are trying to work on new SOTA state of the art large language models and improve their way of how they can use generative AI. Any subscribe to my channel, I will be uploading more and more videos like this.